Komodo dragons, you can see that they put a lot of language in between these two pieces and it's is not the appropriate pronoun for Komodo dragons because Komodo dragons is plural and we'll see some more examples of how the GMAT does that to us. So agreement questions, just to keep it very simple for us, agreement questions also focus on the agreements of nouns and verbs. So when we're testing noun and verb agreement, this is how they have to agree. They have to agree in number. When we're testing pronoun and antecedent agreement, they have to agree in person, in number, and in gender. So this is what we're checking on for noun-verb agreement and pronoun antecedent agreement. Let's not jump to homework quite yet. Let's jump in and look at a bunch of examples of agreement questions. So the first thing we said we're going to do is check our gut. The second thing we said we're going to do is uh, look for patterns and variations in the answer choices to help us identify the issue. Uh, and, and lastly, we're going to eliminate answers, eliminate wordy and awkward answers, and uh, continue to look for additional errors in the answer choices. Good old sentence correction question. We're out of the world of data sufficiency. I'll give you about 10 seconds to read this sentence, and we'll start working on it together. Great, so let's take a look. Outrage over the taxation of paper, the key raw material used by revolutionaries to disseminate propagandist documents, are spreading throughout the colonies and officials fear violence will ensue. My gut's not telling me anything. Maybe your gut tells you something great. You should check that out. But right now, I read this. My gut didn't point anything out to me. Not a problem. Let's go to the answer choices and look for some two, three splits, some differences between the answer choices. The key raw material, key raw material, the key raw material, they're all similar there at the beginning. R, 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 is, is. So I've noticed in split here, three answer choices have R, a couple of them have is. Let me see what this is, what's going on here. What is this referring to? So outrage over the taxation of paper the key, so I can just sort of scratch this out for a second, ignore it. Outrage over the taxation of paper are spreading or outrage over the taxation of paper is spreading? So outrage should be is. So there we go. Let's get rid of all the R's. We made one decision. We eliminated three answer choices. Now we just have to decide between D and E. The key raw material used by early revolutionaries to disseminate propagandist documents, this doesn't change anything. Whereas this says the key raw material enabling early revolutionaries to be able to, it gets, seems to me unnecessarily long and wordier. Let's go with D. Correct. And as you can, if you're working in Grokit, you can always check out the explanations here. Uh, and also, we just recently added this new feature where you can check out the Grokit textbook explaining sentence correction uh, written by our expert instructors here. Get this guy to load up. And you can also check out videos that help you work on GMAT sentence correction uh, issues. So there we go. We have sentence correction spotlight um, and there's a whole chapter from the Grokit GMAT textbook that will help you uh, work on sentence correction issues. Great. So in this question, we checked our gut. For me, my gut didn't tell me anything. I went to the answer choices to look for differences in the answers. I found some differences. I discovered what the issue that was being tested was. It was a ver noun verb agreement issue. I found the noun. It was outrage. It should be singular. Nouns and verbs should agree in number, as we said. Nouns and verbs should agree to, with each other in number. So I made sure that that was the case. We found the right answer. We eliminated the wordier and more awkward one. And uh, we answered that question quickly and accurately. Let's take a look at another example. Go ahead and read this sentence.
Great, so let's take a look here. We have August was the hottest month by far, but even though they, so I have a GMAT robot rule. When I see pronouns underlined, I check their antecedents. Might have been expected for them to rise. So I have two pronouns here. Let's take a look at what they should be referring to. That, that, that's one issue I think I've got to check. Let's take a look at these answer choices to find some differences. Um, they might have been expected for them to rise. It, they, they, it. So I've got, what, three they's and a couple of it's. I gotta make a decision there. Let's go ahead and make that decision first so we can start eliminating. August was the hottest month by far, but even though they might have been expected for them to rise, ice cream sales sharply declined. So the they is referring to the ice cream sales, which seems like an appropriate use of a pronoun. They're matching in person, gender, and number, so let's get rid of it. We got rid of two answer choices, great. So now we have, uh, they might have been expected for them to rise, they might have been expected to rise, they might have been expecting for it to rise. So expecting for it to rise seems wordy and the GMAT often does not like answers, uh, sorry, words that have INGs, especially if it's being, unless it's an appropriately useful gerund. And I don't know why we have to change expected to expecting here. Now, this is a very sort of last second GMAT rule. I've got 10 seconds left or five seconds left on my GMAT and this is my last question or something. Um, I like to stick to the shorter, more concise answers, especially if there's nothing wrong with them. So August was the hottest month by far, but even though they might have been expected to rise, ice cream sales sharply declined. I don't need this them, just creates some confusion and wordiness and awkwardness there. Um, so let's go ahead and pick C. It's simple. It uses they correctly. Uh, it gets this. It gets rid of this them. Keeps the meaning of the sentence. It's short and concise. We should be correct. Great. Very good. Very good. So in this situation, so we, first we saw a noun verb agreement issue. This was a pronoun agreement issue. Let's take a look at another example. So go ahead and read this sentence to yourself real quickly. So what's our GMAT robot rule? When we see a pronoun underlined, we find its antecedent Let's look at these answer choices. I have a they, there, they, they, it. So it looks like that might be an issue actually. Let's find the antecedent. Although the United States Navy faced a terrible setback, having lost blah, 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 blah. They, the United States Navy, here's our antecedent, and they is the pronoun that's being used. I don't think that makes sense because Navy is singular. The Navy is one thing, it's singular, and we should be able to go with it. So that was quick and simple. We saw a pronoun underlined. We be, as a GMAT robot, we found its antecedent. It, they did not correlate. They were not appropriate for each other. So we picked the only answer choice that has a, an appropriate pronoun for that antecedent and very good. So that was quick. If we stick to our GMAT robot rules, we can work through questions a lot more effectively. We don't have to reinvent ourselves on every question that we see. Let's take a look at another example. Go ahead and read this sentence to yourself. Great, so the soaring costs for gasoline and oil, the essential resources allowing car owners to be able to fuel and lubricate their automobiles is leading to increased popular support for new government initiatives to develop alternative and renewable energy sources. So again, here my gut didn't tell me anything, but I noticed that there are some 
differences in the answer choices that I can check. And again, the GMAT typically likes to keep the verb and the noun far apart from each other so that it, we forget what the verb should be by the time we get to it. So, soaring costs. Now, are costs singular or plural? They're plural. So, costs are, we can get rid of all of the is answers. Great. So, now we have two answer choices left. The essential resources enabling car owners to be able to fuel and lubricate their automobiles are, so E is already the shorter one. I probably like that better, but let's just actually understand the difference between these two. Everyone go ahead and read D and E and tell me in the chat box which one you think is the correct answer. So E seems short and concise and gets the point across, enabling, I'm not a big fan of, um, our car owners to be able to, it seems unnecessarily awkward and wordy. I'm going to pick E and see what happens. Great. So another situation where we found some differences in the answer choice. We checked to see if that was an issue. It was an issue. We eliminated, and then we got a couple left. We figured out the difference between the two, and we answered those. That is the process over and over again on sentence correction questions.